You are listening to the Robbie Rocho Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Robbie Rowan, and here is a quick soundbite from today's episode. Because you've practiced, think about how much we practice. Think about how much video you take as a pitcher and really work on your mechanics and fine-tune things. Same thing as hitters, how many swings we've taken off a tee to create that memory with our body um, to happen naturally. Mm -hmm. And you don't let it happen naturally when you think about it. Your attention. Now listening to Clear the Mechanism. The Robbie Rose Show. The Robbie Rose Show. Okay, what is going on? Uh, sorry for the poor audio all around, but hey, when you're in Puerto Rico, you're grinding. Um, all right, so today's episode is going to be done a little bit differently. I've done like road trip episodes uh, in the past of just myself, but today I decided, hey, if we're driving to away games here in Puerto Rico for winter ball and I got some dudes in the car, like why not hit the record button, right? And why not bring you guys a podcast? Now, I'm a perfectionist. So it really, this really does hurt me sometimes in terms of like the audio quality and whatever it is, what it is. You you can hear it. Obviously, we're on the road, so there's going to be some some mumbling sounds or whatever. But just know that the information that's provided in this episode from TJ Rivera and Brett Rodriguez um, and a little bit of myself, I'm biased though, so whatever is, is absolutely worth the grinding through the bad audio. Like to be completely honest, like I, 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 obviously I'm biased towards every episode that I produce is like quality information, but this, I love talking to hitters and I love talking and like, I, I say it in this episode, like this particular conversation that we have is, is really, really like unique in the sense that TJ Rivera who's been up to the big leagues with the Mets. I played against him like in the minor leagues, like just an absolute dude. Um, honestly, one of the better hitters that I've ever faced. Uh, but yeah, so then uh, you have TJ who, you know, is has been around the block 10 years professionally, been through the minor leagues, played winter ball, played in the World Baseball Classic, played in the, like, obviously has a ton of experience. And then on the other hand, you have Brett Rodriguez, who this is his first taste of professional baseball. Like, uh, he was just in college last year, so it's really cool to see kind of the two sides from it, um, even though Brett, I would even consider very uh, mature in his approach. Um, and then you have me, who's a pitcher, right? So it's it's interesting for me to sit there and, and have conversations with these guys and see the similarities. Um, one avenue that we explore in this podcast or in this conversation, whatever you want to call it, is that I absolutely loved was the emphasis on like the mental component of of hitting right and the mental component and putting a routine in place to put yourself in a, a position of, of having success when you get up to the box right so that's my air conditioner we'll go ahead and hit power off sorry about that but uh yeah so really cool episode um won't talk too long about that but i will say we're underway for those of you guys who've been following the journey following me personally we're underway. I've had one outing, really good outing. I'm trying to get that footage. I have the footage, actually. I just need to do like a little breakdown on it, and then I'll upload it to YouTube. If you're listening to this and you haven't subscribed to my YouTube, be sure to do so. I'll include the link in the show notes. Um, what else? You can follow my Instagram. Uh, and then the vlog, right? So the vlog is, is cool. We filmed, actually, episode seven was yesterday, and that's the podcast you're going to listen to was the road trip there, away game. And uh, I told TJ that we, we should film a, or record a podcast after or before every single game because he was the player of the game, that this particular game, um, and uh, he had a tater. He had a bomb, no doubter. So now we're forced to do this every time. Uh, sponsorship of this podcast goes to Go Ultima. Go Ultima is the sponsor of this podcast due to the fact that I gave TJ a little packet of Go Ultima, which is an electrolyte drink, and or it's a little packet of powder electrolytes. Um, blue raspberry is my favorite. I gave him one, and he hit a tater. So there's obviously a lot of reasons why he hit a tater and was the player of the game, and it wasn't just because he's good. It was because he had the Go Ultima drink, and um, that is the only reason. 
<laughs> but uh, Gold Ultimate, like I said, is an electrolyte drink. It's a lot healthier option than, than Gatorade or, uh, in my opinion, you know, the Liquid IV, who is kind of packed with sugar. I won't talk too much about it like I'm, I'm some smart nutritionalist person, but I just know that uh, we, we partnered up, a few, I want to say, a few years ago. And um, they are providing my listeners or my audience a potential discount code if you're interested in purchasing. I will include Go Ultima, uh, the links in the show notes as well. But like I said, they're, they're giving my audience a, a discount. If you want to try it, check it out. It's uh, discount code Robbie, R-O-B-B-Y, at ultimareplenisher.com. And you can get that discount if you go ultimareplenisher.com slash discount slash Robbie. Um, but like I said, I'll include that link in the show notes. And um, I have that. I have a ton of it here in Puerto Rico, which is extremely important because it's it's so freaking humid, and I'm constantly sweating. And you got to get those electrolytes in you, man. Potassium, magnesium, sodium, and the flavors are solid. And there's no none of that crap uh, in terms of like added sugar, maltodextrin, all that stuff. Um, so be sure to check them out. Click the link in the bio. Um, I'm a advocate of that as well. So. Without further ado, we're going to get to this episode. Like I said, we're in the car, we're driving, but the quality of information is unmatched. So hope you guys enjoy, and if you could do me a favor and share this episode with maybe a hitter or someone that struggles with the mental game or someone just that doesn't really understand the importance of like putting routines in place and putting these certain things and certain protocols in place to put yourself in a situation to have success on a daily basis. So here is TJ Rivera. Brett Rodriguez and myself in a road trip, in a car ride to the other side of the island in Puerto Rico, talking about all things hitting, approach, mental game, visualization, breathing, and ordering food in Spanish. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy. Talk to you after the show. Bro, I gave you this and you didn't even do no, it. No, I remember yesterday I told you I forgot it in the car, and then so I just drank one of my things that were in my book bag. I'll drink it today, though. Do you know how far your freaking tater would have went if you had this? I know. I do. Oh. Um, speaking of taters, I hit the record button. <laughs> speaking of taters. <laughs> yeah. So we're, uh, so we're live. So we're live. We're live. I mean, how's my voice sound? <laughs> I'm oh, looking at yeah. the limiter thing on the deal, so. No, yeah, I hit that tater. It's definitely recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Is this thing on? Is this thing work? Um, so, just to give the audience, I'll do a little, I'll do a pre-roll later so we won't have to give too much detail. Where should I put this? What is it? Uh, Alright, we'll put it right there. Or do you need to put your phone no, on? No, it's right here. It's fine. We are in a car. The Yari. I love how you're fixing your hat. <laughs> I know, I'm <laughs> always like, every time I talk, I feel like I'm being recorded via <laughs> visual. Video. Um, but we just decided, actually, I decided, so therefore we decided, that we were going to put a mic on us, because I feel like we're just... Everything we say is just gold. It's just nuggets, bro. I don't know about Brad in the back, but definitely, bro. <laughs> definitely. Brad's got the best. Uh, got gold nuggets, gold nuggets back there. Gold nuggets. We have some podcast virgins. That this is big. This is your guys' I'm a first nervous. time. I'm a little nervous. Where's the, oh, so there. Okay, we got two mics set up. One in the front. One in the back. Ready to rock. We're just gonna. We're just gonna talk. Two hitters here, one one athlete, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna kind of just hang out. I don't know how long we'll go. We got what an hour left, probably. At least, yeah, an hour, two hours. Yeah, probably two. We have hours. two hours hour left. Hour it's two and a, two and a half. Plus, gotta stop to get food. I thought from one side of the island to the other was only two hours. No, dude, two and a half to San Juan, and then but probably you can get across the island maybe in three. So we go up and then over. So no, we go, we go down. down. Go all the way on the bottom. So each the bottom and the top of the island both have like the main roads that can go all the way across. And there's nothing through so the middle through the mountains. You can go through the mountains, but it'll take uh, you know way longer. So we're going south uh, and then rolling up top. All right. So we're, we're going. We're coming from Mayaguez or Cabo Rojo to San Juan. Yes. Uh, yeah. Man, we have two hours left. Two hours. There's not good. We have a lot. Of, all right. So. Since we got some hitters here, I want to start. TJ, you can start. Um, let's talk. I kind of want to talk about something we really haven't dove into yet, so you don't have to repeat yourself. Okay. But uh, let's talk. Let's talk approach. In in the sense of, uh, does your 
approach change? We'll keep it super broad. Does your approach change from righty pitcher to lefty pitcher? What is your overall goal, and then what are your like sub sub goals? I guess per obviously there's tons of different types of pitchers, but we'll just stay at like a righty and a lefty. Does it change or does it stay the same? Um, I think it depends on the pitcher itself. Like more you know, so the, the pitcher more than so the, the pitcher. Yeah, like so. Like stuff wise. Right. Exactly. What he what he offers and what he's what he does to get you out. A lot of left handed. Pitchers, I feel like more often than righties are for some reason just are slow throwing lefties that sometimes are junk ballers. I don't know. That's kind of what I've I've seen throughout my career is that um, more often the lefty would be throwing a little slower and have a little fade to his fastball. Um, so so that would kind of you know if I saw that or saw his numbers that were telling me he likes to go with his change up and stay away, I would think right center, sit back a little bit more. Maybe use a bigger bat. That's what I used to do. But um, you used to change your bat. I used to change. Yeah. Like if there was a slow throwing lefty, I used to whip out. What is slow to you, though? Not slow throwing. Like uh, you know, high eighties. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like eighty eight or eighty seven. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like and a guy that kind of fades away from you uh, and, and sticks with his change up a lot. I would once in a while use a bigger bat. Um, yeah. I don't know. That was just something I felt. I felt more comfortable with a little more length to my bat. I didn't do it all the time. But then you got the, the guys that throw hard, too, the lefties that come in hard. And, and you know, the approach for those guys is very uh, very similar to the, to the righty. For me, be ready to hit the fastball um, and then adjust to the other stuff with two strikes, you know. And then the righties. Does anything physically, like, is there a physical adjustment with two strikes? No. With choke two, up? yeah. With two, yeah, for me, personally. I, I like to choke up. Even sometimes with one strike, I'll, I'll get a little a little more up on the on the handle. Just to have a little more barrel control, especially with the guy that's you know some overpowering stuff and, and throws really hard. Uh, I'll, I'll go 0 1 with a little choke up just to feel the barrel a little better. Um, but 0 2 choking up for sure. I like to think a little wider um, with your feet, with my base. Yeah, uh, okay. a little wider with my base, and, and I go from a leg kick to a you know put my foot down early type thing. Um, what do you think are the benefits of that in terms of like? Why don't you just do one thing the entire at bat, and why does it change? Yeah, I don't know. I've played with both of my whole career, and I've I've messed with both. Um, and honestly, my numbers don't change much. Like my power, power numbers don't my change. Power numbers, like we tested it a little bit in spring this year, and there wasn't much different. Um, you know, with my my exit lows and anything like that, with just putting my foot down and having a leg kick. So what I realized is that my leg kick is not much of a power generator. It's more of a rhythm timing yeah, yeah. mechanism you know what I'm saying so yeah, like my leg yeah. kick I've learned is more of my timing mechanism it's not creating more power um, it's just something where my legs in the air and I'm seeing the baseball that I put down to fire so with the base my, my leg down I do less movement I might have a little less rhythm with two strikes you know what I'm saying yeah. but I'm in a good position already earlier to fire um, and there's not there's a little less movement and, and uh, I'm okay with getting beat with two as opposed to early in the count. There's probably like a mental thing there too, yeah? Because you've been doing it for so long. It's yeah. Like a comfort. Yeah, it's a, there's a comfort in being down already, right? And like you feel like you're you're uh, you're less open to getting exposed and being fooled and, and uh, out in front when your foot's down, you're seeing the ball, your head's not moving. There's that comfort of knowing that you're already in a hitting position early right. uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, so I just like to see the ball a little deeper, be okay with getting jammed. Because you know you're worried about the off-speed O2 or chasing and, and whatnot, so um, so that's my difference between my my, my early account and uh, my, my two strike. So your adjustments from from anything in the box physically isn't necessarily dependent on righty lefty. It's more just like hard soft. It's hard soft in, in the counts. Uh, those so are more so probably like starting relievers, right? Because I mean, mass majority. I mean changing now but starters are usually going to be your softer guys and then mm -hmm. any guy that's coming out of the pen from fifth inning on is right is more your your velo guys and, that, and that's when i went to when i when i was coming off the bench a little bit for my first time i went to i eliminated the whole late kick because in the game you know you're getting four at bats you can get a little rhythm with your pitcher yeah. you'll get three at bats off of him sometimes so you can find that rhythm with him but uh when i was coming off the bench i went straight to that put that foot down ready to fire 
kind of worked out. I stuck with it. Look at all these. Look at these tops. Yeah. yeah. I think they're coming coming to get us. That's, that can't be good. Thanks. Yeah. So that that's really where. Uh, and then sometimes the guys are different. If a guy's quick to the plate, foot's going down quick. Guy on first base, he's slide stepping a bunch. Yeah. I eliminate the. Like, what if a guy's like we talked about the other day, like deceptive? Right, like, are you gonna are you gonna widen your base there and just try to make contact? It yeah, just, if it feels yeah. uncomfortable to you. I think if it, it all just depends. Like, if if he's sneaky and I felt like I had a leg kick my first pitch, I didn't see the ball and I had no rhythm or something, uh, I'll go straight to put my foot down just to get a better visual of his pitches. And it just really just depends on from from pitcher to pitcher, uh, the way they come to the plate, the way I'm seeing them. Uh, their stuff plays like so yeah I was, just, uh, I was just thinking like this is gonna be actually a really cool conversation because like you're obviously more experienced what ten years now yeah about, about nine, nine years in professional yeah, and nine. then we got freaking Brad <laughs> everyone that listened to this is like looking up Brad right Brad, now yeah. like, his Brad. name's Brad B-Rad B-Rad so Brett, who you have, this is your first professional season. First professional season, first professional anything. So you're just coming from college. Yeah. So my everything. Man. Shout out Wolford. Wolford. Yeah, Wofford. 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 Yeah. I always think of the the, the wafers, potato, the, the, <laughs> the no, vanilla so wafers. Everything that I'm going to be talking about is pretty much based off of my college. Yeah, but my experience. listeners, dude, this is where it gets interesting because like my listeners are going to be more tailored to like probably you yeah right whereas yeah. it's going to be more advanced that yeah, they gotta saying, go through. not saying like it's an intelligent thing or just yeah. you know but whatever so like so i'm just way better than i'm a genius that's basically what i'm getting at is whoever has the better body has the better swing and that's how we settle all yeah, arguments well, that's not good <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, i shouldn't have eaten that pizza um <laughs> so the mayo ketchup. brett so since you're coming from college you're like there's probably obviously a higher volume of like soft versus like 95 plus right yeah so like definitely. are you relatable to what uh, tj was saying in regards to like the the actual stuff of the guy is going to play more of a role in how you're adjusting your swing or are you even at that level in your development where you're adjusting swings you're kind of just one size the whole way no i definitely have been a, adjusting throughout so i actually he was talking about his leg kick a little bit I started a leg kick my junior summer in Mystic, Connecticut. I was having some trouble with, I would just pick my foot up and put it down. At least I, that's what I thought I was doing until one of my hitting coaches found out I was kind of stepping in the bucket. Is from what, the leg kick? No, just from just picking it up, putting it down, but I was stepping out. I was trying to get like more hip separation probably, but right. I didn't even know it and it was causing me to not be able to hit the outside pitch as well right so i started trying the leg kick to keep my feet kind of in the same spot uh -huh. so i would go leg kick up so then i would be trying to almost create my front foot being a little bit in front of my back foot just because i was stepping in the bucket so much right. so that's that was something that kind of helped me just stay balanced and then i started using it as a timing mechanism like tj was saying but yeah. so do you think that so i mean does that generate more power? Because I feel like it's tough because we, we said the other day with hitters, like you're not necessarily trying to gain a lot of like lateral ground, right? Yeah, like you're not no. trying to go towards like the pitcher. Right. But like when you're leg lifting, what is the overall goal o other than like obviously timing, right? You leg lift and your hands can go back and you, cre you create yeah. stretch. Um, but you feel that like with a leg kick, it does allow you to generate more power, or is it just an individual basis thing? I don't know if it really gives me more power. I'd, I'd have to check, on like like he said with his velo, but I don't think it does. I think it's more, my leg kick gets bigger the more comfortable I am in the box. So like 100 plus at bats, my leg kick starts just getting naturally bigger just because I'm comfortable and I'm, I feel like I'm on time more. Yeah. Versus when I go in and I'm, I don't feel comfortable and I feel like the pitcher might, might be ha like have some really nasty stuff and stuff like that I usually lower my leg kick and I don't even sometimes I don't even know that like I, I'd have to go back and watch like a video thing. and it, like when I'm when I'm hitting well I notice my leg kick is higher and I just feel way more on time in like the two strike conversation with two strikes I try to for a little bit in my junior year I tried to not even have a leg kick with two strikes I went from leg kick 
and then just keep my foot straight on the ground and just try to hit it over the second baseman's head. So it's more comfortability for me when I'm more comfortable, higher leg kick versus less comfortable. Try to How do you it. quantify comfort? Like that's always like something that interests me. Yeah. Because like everyone's going to have different types of comfort, right? Yeah. Like if this guy that for hitters, it's like if the pitcher isn't good, his stuff is flat, mm -hmm. there's comfort, yeah. right? There's comfort in terms of volume too. I don't have many ABs. I'm not seeing a lot of like live pitching. When you first got here, TJ, it was kind of like, you know, everyone's throwing 200 miles an hour, so therefore I'm a little uncomfortable. Right, right. So, Brett, how do you like, how do you quantify your comfort? So I, I pretty much go pitch to pitch at bat to at bat with how comfortable I'm feeling. Like when I first got here, I obviously was not very comfortable from not seeing live pitching in almost eight months. Yeah, and, and then, it's totally advanced. And it's, right? Yeah, obviously professional pitchers throwing to me. So my leg kick was almost nothing. I was just trying to pretty much hit the ball back up the middle, not take too big of swings, not try to really pull anything, just literally go second base, don't think about much besides bat to ball. And comfortability, I guess, now as I'm starting to get some more at bats and see, uh, I've, I mean, we've been playing for what three weeks about now. Yeah, three years with the inner <laughs> squads. Yeah, it feels three years. forever. It feels about that, but I definitely could just feel, and and it, it it's pitchers too, like Velez for instance. I feel like I saw a lot of Velez in college because he's a, you know, like that that 88, 91 lefty that right. has a really good changeup. Yeah. So like when he was I when he was pitching to me. I felt a little bit more comfortable. I felt like I can get, I can kind of get my leg kick going. I can, I can get my hands moving a little bit more. Yeah. Versus like Hagen's when I when I faced Hagen's, he's mid nineties with something I haven't. I, I've never faced a Hagen's yeah. pretty much. So in my it's life. volume. It's yeah. volume. It's just yeah. So that, that I went right first pitch. First pitch I saw, try to hit it back up the middle. Yeah. So, I mean, what is your overall approach, though? Like, if, if a scout were to, like, come up to you and be like, what is the goal of every single one of your at-bats? What are you saying? So, for me, being kind of a speed guy, I, I'm i trying to get on base in every way possible, whether that's a walk, whether that's a double, whatever. So, I'm usually trying to take some pitches, and I'm trying to, early in the count, I'm going to take some pitches and and then just kind of battle and go up the middle. And if I get ahead in the count, so 2-0, I'm then going to try to probably start pull a little bit, go um, pull gap pretty much. And then two strikes is just totally different. At that point, I'm just competing, trying to stay late. My two strike approach, that was a big thing that we worked on in college. And it was, we go, I literally try to hit a fastball at the first baseman. So see it later. Yeah, just try to see it as late as I can so that any off-speed, any junk thrown, I'm now on time for, and I'm not going to be fooled as much if I'm just trying to stay late on the fastball. Do you find that you're actually better in terms of comfort, like, later in counts due to that approach? Whereas, like, because I see a lot of guys, dude, that get, like, 2-0, 1-0, hitters counts, and then you get that anxiousness. Yeah. So as a pitcher, if I see that, and that's a very physical thing that I could see in terms of, like, all right, this guy's got, like, really quick hands. He's going to want to get going. So if he gets ahead of the count, it's almost like, eh, whatever, I'm not really too concerned because I can go fastball, four-seam down and away. And like you said, you know, you get anxious, you want to go pull side. Yeah. And it's usually, like, a 6-3. Yeah. Um, so do you, do you find, like, yourself getting better, deeper in counts? Yeah, I actually definitely do. That was actually something that... I worked on was being better in advantage counts because a lot of time advantage counts I try to pull I, I pull off a lot I'm following stuff off I'm I'm pulling it to the third baseline because of being a righty foul a bunch and then all of a sudden I'm back to even and now I'm fighting again so that was something I try to work on is just staying like keep breathing slowly and just trying not to do too much in an advantage count because everyone everyone thinks that you know everyone's like oh it's advantage count I got to do damage and then you start thinking and you're like okay get faster get earlier and all of a sudden next thing you know it's 2-2 two -two. Right. you follow two off and, and you're right back to even and I'm back to wide base just trying to hit something back up the middle yeah dude it's the same thing for pitchers though right like you get 0-2 and you're like oh yeah now I got to make the better pitch yep. or now I got to get nastier if you just like executed two pretty good pitches yep. it's the same thing 
Uh, you mentioned breathing. Do you have any like breathing like strategies? Because I I pretty much geek out on like the whole <laughs> breath stuff. So like for yeah, you, a lot of out <laughs> for on, you, dude. are you like consciously, which is like obviously a conscious thought, not so much subconscious that it just happens naturally. Are you having to consciously tell yourself like breathe, yeah, relax, no, slow it down? Definitely. Definitely, I have to think about it, especially with two strikes. Whenever I get two strikes, if you look at me, I go bat, bat to the helmet, and I just look right at usually like the handle part and yeah. just try to breathe and try to slow focal so my heart breath and like my heart rate down as much as I can. Mm, that's a good a good segue into another. TJ, we'll go back to you, Brett. Nice job, man. You you really hammered that. You really I'm me, really man. proud of you, kid. Um, <laughs> Golden nuggets back here. Yeah. Golden, Golden nuggets in the back seat. Let's try not to miss also, any I more pee really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I got to urinate too, man. Do you? Okay, so maybe the next rest stop. Will, yeah, uh, so we got, what, an hour and a half yeah, left? Two we can we're, 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 we're actually Hold on. How does it say we still it's have... Still, how does it say we still have two hours? It's a, It was 155 early. It's 152 now. It was 155 20 minutes ago. I'm driving real slow, buddy. <laughs> Oh, there must be an accident. Or another accident. We got our papers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, go on the other side where it's not so bumpy. Uh, hey, you heard that? Bumpy. We use our blinkers here. <laughs> oh, now we're good. Um, so pre, uh, pre-AB or pre-pitch process. Um, I know when I was with Pittsburgh, we talked a lot about like having a focal point in the stadium that's there at every single stadium. Brett mentioned like looking at the bat that mm-hmm. kind of brings you back into like this, uh, your happy place, if you will. Do you have anything uh, pre-AB, pre-pitch that you do? Uh, yes. I think the breathing thing was really important too, but, uh, but for me, whenever I get a little like I anxious, can't tell you or I have to kill you. <laughs> I can't tell you yeah, my yeah. process. I have something that's not going to know about it. <laughs> Um, I think I read something about, so this is where it came from, first off, but I, I, I read something that Evan Lagoria yes, did. Yes, the foul pole one? Foul pole, yeah. and I've kind of taken that with me since I can't remember why. It's been years now. Um, just and, and you just know you have that at every field you go to, right? right? Have you ever been with field without a foul pole? So that there's something there that makes me think about my family. Like yeah. that's what really kind of slows it down for me because there's Your anchors a, still to this day. Yeah. You know, with Brett Sullivan, I, I, I get just as anxious as he probably does as a 22 year old first professional at bat. I'm, you know, 32, yeah. and I still feel that anxiousness of wanting to perform, that anxiousness of wanting to do well for the team. Everything just, you know just kind of comes all in at once whenever you're at, at, in the batter's box so for me breathing is really important I'll, I'll take a peek at the right uh the right line foul pole right foul pole and uh it'll just remind me of why I do this it makes me think of my family my, my two kids and it kind of makes me relax a little bit yeah and it just brings all that back to uh, you know and, and, and then I center my myself and I'll I like the bat thing too I used to do that a bunch uh coming up just look at the uh, the label on the bat. Take a deep breath, and I like to I like to breathe during my at bat. So like other than right before my at bat, you know, right before I get in the batter's box and doing my right field my right um, pole thing. I'll right breathe. field foul pole. That's what it is. Right <laughs> foul pole. It's too many words. It's a right pole. Right? It doesn't right make sense too, because like it's a foul pole, but it, if you hit it, it's fair. It's fair. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, yeah. we gotta fix that. Yeah, that's why I trust it. We got <laughs> we gotta fix fair that. Pole. Also, we're stuck in traffic, but uh, yeah, it's good for the audio. So breathing for me was like I would I'll breathe right before the pitcher is about to throw to help eliminate thought, um, mm-hmm. and that is really important for me. I, uh, you know, other than like meditating and, and practicing breathing off the field when I'm in that batter's box, and I find myself I breathe no matter what when I really find myself thinking too much about what I'm trying to do, mm-hmm. um, breathing really loud catcher probably thinks I'm crazy but breathing really loud eliminates that thought for me flow state um it gets me back into that zone and, and uh it just makes things a little smoother it, it, it makes things less tense mm-hmm. um and it frees up my swing I, I feel uh because you know especially in those hitters counts it's I, kind of the opposite oh two oh one sometimes I feel more comfortable because when I'm in those hitters counts that's when I get my that tenseness that's when I get that anxiousness um, or so the, get the ball. I want to go get it. I don't let it come to me. Uh, so that's when the breathing really helps me stay focused, helps me stay loose, uh, and then free of thought as well as, as best as I can. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the same thing all around, right? Like and then we, the tater comes every time. Yeah, I mean, it's tater. just the hip internal rotation. <laughs> <laughs> so then I start thinking hip internal, I pull off the balloon. But it's funny, right? Because like we work so hard with like our, our preparation, right? Like we can prepare the best that anyone's ever seen someone prepare. But like if we're consciously in thought and we're activating like prefrontal cortex over and over again, then your body isn't capable of going just back to the patterns that you've given it, right. the, the, the movements that you've given it, right? Mm -hmm. So like, that's the huge piece that you see over and over again in like baseball, golf especially, right? Because golf's very slow, so mm -hmm. there's so much time to think. Whereas in other sports, uh, like hockey or football, like basketball, especially faster paced, right? Not enough time to think. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it's so important with that mental side as far as like that, that breath. I, I, I do, I really believe like that's the, that's like the missing link, especially like, cause it doesn't like, doesn't really get taught a whole lot, right? right. It's so much it's, physical, it's overlooked, yeah. so much physical stuff, but like you're not able to tap into that physical stuff and those, mm -hmm. those, those physical movements or whatever that you train so hard to obtain unless you can get your freaking mental side locked in. Um, in my yeah. opinion, I think I, it's just... Yeah, and then, because you've practiced, think about how much we practice. Think about how much video you take as a pitcher mm -hmm. and really work on your mechanics and fine-tune things. Same thing as hitters, how many swings we've taken off a tee to create that memory with our body um, to happen naturally. Mm -hmm. And you don't let it happen naturally when you think about it. You, you force things. Yeah. Um, and, and in reality, as a hitter, like maybe I don't know how much it works for a pitcher. Like I, I don't know thinking about my motion and my because you're not having to react to much. You're you're just yeah, controlling maybe like your a movements. Like one cue, one cue like that one maybe thing, you know what I mean. Thing. But for us as a hitter, I think the most important thing is is to be as free of thought as possible because we're, we're we have such little time to react if we're thinking about anything else other than seeing it. Takes and, away and from the, it takes the, away from you know the the, yeah. the goal. Of, you know, because you're ball. reactive, right? So like. It, you can only you can be you have to be as quick as possible in terms of like every moving part right, right. so obviously we know that there's a, a lot of components to actually hitting a baseball it's like the hardest thing ever because you're having to make a decision there's like the vision aspect there's the, the brain but like all of these things are going to be happening at the best of your ability if you're only clear of thought right. which is funny too because we I, we always think like when it comes time to perform the mind wants to get involved and the brain wants to become active, but it's the opposite, right? Like allow the brain to be active in like your preparation and your training. And then when it comes time to perform, like, Hey, let's turn you off and then turn the body like as full max as possible. Oh, yeah. The better question is, are we going to jump into that sea? Like those yeah, guys? Us a couple <laughs> pictures. Is that say Ponce? Ponce. This Ponce. is where my mom's from. Oh yeah. And this, there's always people in the Ponce, sign. In these signs. And they I would get at <laughs> least, <laughs> I'd get at least freaking triple digit double clicks on the gram. Oh, if I yeah. do that up. Maybe one of we these can make a TikTok up there, dude, for sure. Uh, Brad, what do you got, man? What's your... <laughs> what's your... So, yeah. just for the listeners... Is it still recording? <laughs> just for the <laughs> listeners. For some there. reason, every time we go to order food, we're in Puerto Rico, so everyone speaks uh, Spanish, Spanglish, whatever. For some reason, Brett just gets pronounced either Brat or Brad. And it's always. funny, so now it gives us something that we can always laugh at. So now you guys are in on the inside joke. So. Inside joke, Brad. Um, Pre-pitch, pre-at-bat process for you being a younger guy. I mean, I'm sure like this is stuff that maybe you maybe you haven't put a lot of thought in, maybe you have. I, I like No, we uh that. we I did a lot of this actually at school. So um well, never bi mind a then. big thing that that we talked about in like our hitters meetings and and just with my hitting coach. Shout out JJ Edwards by the way. <laughs> He, um, Easy on the shout out, but we only allowed five a show. Yeah, so this is my first. And Brad, was Brad. visual visualization. So mm. we did something called the visual visualization station, mm. which is that's when, a tough one. Yeah, yeah. How about that? So we did when we, you were when you were fourth, you were up. So there's the batter on deck in the hole, the fourth guy. When you're in that station, we actually had a designated spot where there was caution tape, and everyone on the bench had to. If you were if you were in that fourth spot, you were on one side, and everyone else was on other, and you kind of were crossed over into your visualization station 
and there was a seat there and it was just kind of you kind of could put the, the chair wherever I always faced it towards towards just the dugout where I was looking at nothing hmm. and I would sit there and it's pretty much just meditating and I'd sit there and I would visualize mm -hmm. what I wanted to do and like I, we could we kind of got to pick where whatever we wanted to visualize and but my personal one was I would always picture a line drive a, a fastball line drive going over the second baseman's head splitting the gap and then a off-speed pitch going over the shortstop's head also splitting the gap so I would just play that over and over in my head and kind of just relax just breathe close my eyes meditate and just visualize exactly what I wanted I'd see the pitcher throwing uh, throwing either that fastball or that off-speed pitch and me doing exactly that walking through each like little step in my swing walking up to the plate just everything and try to just kind of see and then because a big thing also is uh I believe in thoughts become things and the more you think and the more the power of, of thinking and thoughts so I would always think and I would visualize exactly what I wanted to do so when I got up to the plate I mean I've, I did it a couple of times but even if I didn't it was just the, the idea that I'm I'm trying to see what I want to do at the plate so yeah. that was a, a big thing for me um before and I did that every game and I still try to do that obviously not as much now but I, I'll usually go and it, it's kind of hard being a pinch hitter when yeah. I'm not in the um, lineup every day but I still try to do it throughout the game kind of thing um yeah the thoughts become things it's it's a hundred percent like obviously like not every at bat not every pitch is going to be the exactly what you want it right yeah. but how many times thoughts the negative thoughts become things right yeah. like mm -hmm. I speak firsthand from like you get that 0-2 count and you get the slider call and you're like don't hang it <laughs> or right, like right. don't do this and then boom you do it um or like don't oh two out, yeah like oh two even before an at bat you know with guys in scoring position and you know that you got to hit a deep fly ball and the infield mm -hmm. infield's in don't hit it on the ground like and then boom it happens like yeah. that um yeah that's the wording is really important the way you, you word things in your mind like um affirmative thoughts i think are really affirmations important. man you know those because it's the it's exact uh, it's it's funny when you say don't do you're most likely you're most likely gonna do yeah. you know what I mean? don't yeah. strike out don't strike out so yeah. so like just wording it different right put the ball in play hit the ball hard mm -hmm. just something like that to word it different in your mind um i think i think that plays a big role i think it, i think it's funny too because like Dude, I've been playing I'm 10 years in professionally, and it's like I know exactly like what to think and what not to think, what to do and what not to do, all these things, like mentally, mm -hmm. physically, all But, like, I still fall back into those paths. You know, like oh, I absolutely. still – it's so crazy, too, because it's like we don't want to sit here and talk about all these things and make it sound, like, easy because it's not, right? Like we, we still are going to have that thought of, like, don't hang it, don't – but I think going back to TJ, what you said about, like – the breath right like I do believe that that's such a main main staple in any athlete right like any athlete because it mm -hmm. takes that it takes that potential negative thought process and it away mm -hmm. right and you just, you're you're allowing yourself to to be in be in that flow um what do we got as far as this traffic is it's this, is this forever yeah, it's, it's got to stop longer it's stop with this. this is back to back so days I see for you. we're just yeah we're just one lane in it right here i think so maybe that could be the congestion and then maybe we'll get right through it and go to the bathroom <laughs> every time i hear congestion i think of the pepno bismol commercial <laughs> upset stomach <laughs> diarrhea <laughs> um yeah so what uh we'll transition now obviously there's a lot of things we can potentially talk about what is uh what type of pitchers are the guys that give you trouble um, Historically speaking. First, before we transition, I want, if there's kids listening, I think they need to take into consideration the visualization thing. I wanted to say, I was going to say that right before we talk about traffic. Um, as a young of an age, you can take advantage of visualizing and seeing things because I think that was one thing I've always, as a kid, saw myself playing professional baseball. Like, not through trying to, but through... Uh, just wanting to so bad that I always picture myself playing yeah. pro ball so I think that honestly helps lead to the outcome that you're looking for so if you can at a young age start to see yourself hitting the ball hard start visualizing um, good things happening as it sounds easy it's tough to do still but do it and, and uh, yeah 
So, Shit, man, like you even hit, I, I listen to like a lot of like successful business owners, mm-hmm. like to listen to them talk, and they're in that same boat. Like I just visualize myself having success. Right. I visual I visualize myself killing like a keynote speech, mm-hmm. like whatever it is. I think, yeah, we can train like our physical body to be comfortable in certain quote unquote uncomfortable positions mm-hmm. uh, or environments, but like. What about the mental side? What what about your brain? What about your mind? Like, how can we train that mind to be un, be comfortable in those uncomfortable environments, right? Mm-hmm. And like, those are things that, and this is something I always talk about, is like, what can you control? Like, being intentional with not just your physical preparation, but your mental preparation mm-hmm. is a controllable aspect towards your development. So, I mean, shoot, man, like, I get asked all the time by kids, you know, hey, I want to play even like D1 baseball or I want to play varsity ba- baseball uh, as a high school I want to play professional baseball like if you want to do that and you want to achieve that goal then are you doing everything that you can potentially be doing mm-hmm. to put yourself in the best possible situation to achieve that goal mm-hmm. and I think when we look at like alright let's check the boxes of development what do I need to do no one really looks at like the visualization the mental aspect mm-hmm. the breathing the this the that as like top priority in that development, but it needs to be. I think, you know, if, if you can almost trick your mind into being like, oh, this is uncomfortable, but I've already visualized it. Right. Now, I'm, now I'm comfortable. Now I can be myself, right? Like now I can flow. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, basically the bottom line is don't suck. <laughs> Just be the <laughs> if best. If we break it down, don't suck. Um, I actually have a little story too about story time with that we're, story yeah, time a little gold right yeah. here. Dude, um, we're back in freaking The purple red's zone. gotta go. The red's gotta go. It's, yeah. Your colors are way off. Still dude. an Let's, hour 48. Dude, we should have left at freaking 7 a.m. Wow. But anyways, going back to the thoughts become things. Um, Adam Bernero is my mental health skills Same coach. Too. Um, for the three. Mariners, another shout out. Here's my second. To Wait, is that who we listened to last night? Oh, it was. I'm pretty sure that was his name was Adam. I don't know what his last name was. Yeah, was he was Bernera? on the Mind Strong podcast. Yes, he. Mm-hmm. I think he he does do that. But um, he he was That's telling nice. us a story actually about just the whole I, I, like concept of thoughts become things and kind of trying to 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 have positive thoughts rather than negative and the negative ones can affect you and 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 just it's just the whole don't strike out kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. He was, um, so he was telling our, our group a little story about when he was just getting called up to the bigs, he, um, his, like one of his first appearances was he had to face, um, the big hurt, um, as for his, like his first outing in, in the big league. Oh, Thomas. Frank Thomas. Yeah. So he was saying how he was getting in there. He was in the bullpen. He's warming up, doing whatever, doing his normal routine. And he's, he's just like, he said he was swimming in his head a little bit, like, just thinking, oh my God, my first, my first major league debut kind of thing, my first outing. I'm gonna go in there. He's gonna hit it 600 feet off me. I'm gonna get called back down. I'm gonna, it's just gonna go. Everything's gonna go bad. And he goes. So, and, and a lot of his career, he and he told us this. He, he definitely had some, some mental, um, like problems going through, like kind of trying to stay positive rather than thinking the, what could possibly go wrong. Right. So he said. He was thinking all these bad thoughts, whatever, and then all of a sudden, one of his friends that was also in the bullpen came up to him and and told him, "Hey, they don't call him the big skirt for nothing." <laughs> and he was a little confused at first. He's like, well, "What do you mean?" And he said, "He doesn't like fastballs in. He 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 doesn't like when you throw it in high and in on him. And if you get to if you move his feet physically, like get his feet to move to back up a little bit, you got him." He said it's not one of those things where like he can like kind of lean away like you physically move his feet. So he said the rest of his bullpen, the rest of everything he was thinking about is just fastball high and in, fastball high and in on a lefty. So it, the, all he was warming up was a fastball high and in on a lefty to make him move. He got he says okay, so everything happens. He get he get now he's on the the mound and all in warm up still practicing that one thing, just visualizing that one thing. Get get Frank Thomas to move his feet. So he's he's focused on that. He's focused on only that. Like that, that that's what he wants to do. He goes in. He said first pitch executes it per- perfectly. Fastball high and in. He moves his feet. Next pitch away takes it. Next pitch curveball whatever strikes him out. He said 
the whole time he was just thinking about that one pitch rather than, oh, he can hit a 500 feet, all this stuff. And he said his career against the Big Hurt, 0 for 21. Like, you know, <laughs> he said he got him out every time. He said the other guys, he would think bad stuff, and, and they probably hit him pretty good. But against Frank Thomas, because he said that one thing, because he visualized, because he practiced, and he thought a bad outcome, that he always got him out. It's interesting, too, because, like, I look at it. I don't know if this is a bad way to look at it, but I do. But, like, I used to be so, I mean, I still am, but, like, over-analytical, like, overthink. Like, I love to think, right? I don't know if it's necessarily, like, overthinking, but I just love to think. I love, like, the potential of, like, all of the thoughts and all of the, 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 the like, analytics behind every single thing that you can do and, and whatever. But I know personally, and this is, like, branch into like the identification of like what you need to think of what you need to do personally to have success but for me if I like over amplify like certain things for some reason I I put too much internal pressure on then like executing said task so then I almost develop physical restriction from over amplifying like a singular thing right rather than the flip side of the approach where it's like all right, like here's a baseball. I'm gonna lift my leg, and I'm gonna throw it as hard as I can. Right. And you know, I've prepared myself enough in you know training environments to execute all of said pitches. You know that I feel comfortable executing. Now let's go get it. Um, but I think that's just something that I learned through experience. You want to get off here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I might go to BK Lounge and hammer some. Yeah, hammer. I gotta be so bad. Whopper. Yeah. I think that's interesting what you're saying though, because there's like that happy it's a medium, fine line, like right? Fine because line. I, what I was saying was I used to be like such a scouting report guy. Yeah, yeah. I used to visualize like, all right, this guy, I'm going to attack him this way. And then I would put that into the game. And then what I found myself doing over time was like the game of baseball is, is already a ton of external pressure mm-hmm. and in, internal pressure because no one wants to look foolish, right? Mm-hmm. No one wants to be embarrassed. Everyone wants to have the perception of, wow, that guy's good. So therefore there's this like, ooh, good feeling, right? Dopamine mm-hmm. levels increase, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's not to say that that's not a good thing to do. It's not to say that that's a bad thing to do. I think the biggest thing to do is to understand what do you need to do for every individual listening? Yeah, we should go to Wendy's. Wendy's or BK? <laughs> Brad? Uh, Wendy's. Hunter Bands. Hunter Bands. Definitely Wendy's over BK. Um, this is a mess. This is crazy. We have nine cars in one lane. There's no rules. That's the thing. The rules are. Yeah, there's no rules. <laughs> there are no ground rules. Uh, but yeah, I think to round that up, in my opinion, and you can, we got 12 seconds left, but I think <laughs> the most important thing is to like figure out for you as a person, for you as an athlete, mm-hmm. what do you need to think? Right. What do you not need to think? What do you need to do to have success, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, nice. Way to, way to piggyback off. Well, I, I, was, I, I <laughs> thought you wanted to end it on that. Because yeah. I agree. I think we're all different. I think I've played with multiple buddies of mine that have all, they need to think differently. No way I'm getting that line. Uh, oh, that's to go to the bank. Um, and we all, we something clicks different for all of us. Well, you know what I mean? There's some, yeah. some verbal cue or physical cue or mental cue that's all going to just click different for each each one of us individually and and finding what works for you um i think through trial and error I, that's really what trial it comes and error down is to. the way it comes down to because you, you're going to meet so many coaches you're going to meet so many people in your life that are going to tell you one thing and tell you a different thing and yeah, hey this worked for me but maybe it's not going to work exactly for you. and that's and the, where you need to have the professional filter too that's something that i didn't have at 18 right you know and you got to realize, like, everyone in good nature, what do we got? We got a sign here. Uh, it's in Spanish, so we're going to go ahead and say that's a perfect We'll show shot. them our papers. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Break time. Anyone want anything from Wendy's? <laughs> All right. Do it, idiot. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Like I said uh, earlier, if you know someone that could benefit from listening to this, do your part. Help me out. Share this. Um, if you can also do me another favor to help spread the podcast and the popularity and all those like algorithms that you hear about, <laughs> go ahead and leave a review or uh, and leave a written review. I mean, whatever podcast app or platform you listen to this on, there should be an opportunity for you to hit a star or something like that. I'm not sure, but 
Um, also, I forgot to say in the pre-roll, if you're wanting to watch the games that are being played here in Puerto Rico, Winter Ball League, you can go to Facebook and type in Indios de Mayaguez, and you'll be able to see the live streams right there. So if you're interested, if not, don't worry about it. Not going to dislike you. It's okay. <laughs> uh, don't forget, uh, I'll include a link to the sponsor of today's episode, Go Ultima Electrolyte Drink. I'm uh, going to drink one here in 39 seconds because as soon as this uploads, I got to go to the field. We got COVID testing today. Don't forget to watch my vlogs. Episode 5 should be out on the 14th, and my birthday's on the 15th. So if you don't wish me happy birthday, we can't be friends. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed today. Uh, much love. God bless. Hug your moms. Talk to you when I talk to you. See you guys.